this week on the show, we have content creator and TikTok star Kelsey Davies. Known for her unique paranormal content, her TikTok page has garnered over 156 million likes and over 5 million followers. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about learning how to bet on yourself daily. Simply put, betting on yourself means investing your time and energy on making decisions and taking action on things that your future self will thank you for. It means saying yes to your growth and development. It can be making the decision to commit to me time daily, like reading a book or listening to a podcast to learn something new or making time to go to the gym, even though you have a busy schedule. Betting on yourself can also look like moving to a new country to pursue your dreams or leaving a career you aren't happy in to instead follow your passion. Successful people bet on themselves daily as they know the future of their success depends on how much they are willing to invest in themselves. Remember, you can never fail when you bet on yourself because you are your greatest investment. As Pete Wentz quotes, always bet on yourself no matter what the odds are. It means more to be in the race than to watch the victory laps from the stands. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. And I want to talk about Lola, your doll behind you. I know that's your haunted doll. So tell us a little bit about her. And is she really haunted? Yes, absolutely. Um, so she was born in 1901. She passed away in 1919 during the Spanish flu pandemic. She is attached to this vessel. This is her, her doll. She didn't own it or anything, but her spirit found this doll. I don't know how, um, but she chose to attach to it because it looks a lot like her. Like the hair and everything looks very similar to what she looked like when she was alive. Um, so she's super tall she has like this white nightgown on super curly hair and she's just a really friendly spirit and very powerful honestly just like the way she blew up on social media too is very interesting to me um like why you know it's just so otherworldly wardrobe provided by le chateau next on the show we have content creator and tiktok star kelsey davies Known for her unique paranormal content and being a psychic medium herself, her TikTok page has garnered over 156 million likes and over 5 million followers. Kelsey, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing amazing. I'm excited to talk to you. I love your content and your TikTok page has garnered over 156 million likes. But before we get into that, let's take it back to the beginning. I know that you discovered your gift of connecting with spirits. So tell us about how you discovered that gift. Yeah, so ever since I was little, I would have some weird experiences that I just couldn't really explain. Like in dreams, I would just have dreams of like deceased people coming to me, or I would dream of like future events or just have really vivid things happen in my sleep. And then I would see things very briefly, like just like shadows and like um, there was this man that I would see all the time. Later found out he was my great grandfather I had never wow. met. Um, so stuff like that. And then I was really scared of it for a while though. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine because of, of course that would be scary <laughs> because you don't know what's going on, especially as a child. So how did you kind of learn to embrace this gift? Yeah, so I never knew, like I never thought of myself as someone who had gifts, you know, I'd be like, oh, I don't have that or whatever, because I thought a lot of the things I experienced were things that everyone experienced, so I didn't think it was anything different. Um, and then once I started really embracing it the past couple years, I just started tuning into it a lot more. Things started happening to where I couldn't ignore it, because I tried to block it out for a long time, which is what a lot of people do. Um, and then I just started really tapping into that and communicating with spirits and just finding out things that I just didn't even know I could do or things that I didn't know that I was open to, you know, so it's been a journey for sure. Yeah. And I know this runs in your family. You have some Native American roots and that they were also able to um, be a psychic medium. So, so tell us about that and that history. Yeah, so um, the whole Native American side of my family, I didn't know this until like two years ago, um, until I was like really opening up to my family about my experiences. 
and they were like, oh, um, your whole Native American side, they all had gifts, they would do seances, they would move things with their mind, I guess, which like, I mm. don't know, because I can't do that. So mm. um, I guess they had like profound gifts and would read fortunes, their futures and stuff like that. Um, so it's been very cool to just dig into my family's history. I feel like, you know, when you have this kind of gift, you're very prone to people's energy, you know, because you're intuitive. I feel like anyone that's intuitive has that gift of, you know, really feeling people's energy. How has your gift been able to help you kind of uh, decipher people's energy and who you want to be around? Yeah, the hard part of it is I always see the good in people. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of just been hard too. is like really just understanding that not everyone has your your best interest or whatever um but i would always tap into that energy of like the good and i was scared of tapping into like the negative parts but i knew they were there but i would just try to like brush it off or you know things like that but now i've really understood like oh th this energy that i'm feeling is like a warning you know i need to really listen to this listen to my intuition um i believe everyone has the capability of tapping in and like opening themselves up to that part of themselves because we're all spirit having a human experience. <laughs> Absolutely. I am very prone to people's energy. I, I can, if I'm around certain people, I feel good. If I'm around other people, I feel negative. And that's because I'm intuitive. So I, I definitely think we all have that gift. If you are yeah. someone that kind of goes inwards, right? And, and looks within. So I definitely yes, can agree with sure. that. And also, how do you kind of differentiate negative energy and positive energy even when you're seeing spirits and stuff like that how are you able to kind of are you seeing uh spirits that are negative or are they are they positive influences yeah so i'll see both you know oh, um yeah. it depends on where i go if i'm at home and stuff they're good at spirits things like guard okay. uh, guardians and you know stuff like that um but when i do go to like some of the most haunted places in the world there's definitely relatively negative entities there that just don't look like pretty they're not pretty you know um but it's a lot with feelings too just if i have a really heavy feeling then i'll just know that that's a bad energy that i don't really want anything to do with um and then if it's like a positive energy then i feel very comforted and very warm and just in my whole body it's really interesting yeah, of course. And I did see some of your videos where you were at haunted places. Of course, it's spooky season. It's October. So I want to talk about what's the scariest energy that you've ever encountered and where was, was it? At, <laughs> yeah, I think it was at the Hill House in Texas. Yeah, that. um, that's one place I will never return to. I had really bad sleep paralysis. Um, there's just a really negative entity there that is pretty powerful honestly there was a lot happening in that house i just wanted to leave you know it felt like i was in just the lowest vibrational realm in the spirit world and as you walk into that house it's just it's scary it really is scary <laughs> wow okay remind me never to go there ever <laughs> <laughs> and Unless I, you want a paranormal experience then. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I will stay only in positive places. And I want to talk about Lola, your doll behind you. I know that's your haunted doll. So tell us a little bit about her. And is she really haunted? Yes, absolutely. Um, so she was born in 1901. She passed away in 1919 during the Spanish flu pandemic. She is attached to this vessel. This is her, her doll. She didn't own it or anything, but her spirit found this doll. I don't know how, um, but she chose to attach to it because it looks a lot like her. Like the hair and everything looks very similar to what she looked like when she was alive. Um, so she's super tall she has like this white nightgown on super curly hair and she's just a really friendly spirit and very powerful honestly just like the way she blew up on social media too is very interesting to me um like why you know it's just so otherworldly yeah and you have over 156 million likes on your tiktok channel so how has it been seeing people really embrace your gifts and your unique content yeah it's been it's been really cool just being able to share my spiritual journey because i feel like you meet a lot of people who are already established mediums and psychics and things like that but you never really see their journey of how they got there and some people just 
I don't know. They don't even think about it, too. That's something I didn't think about for a while was like, how did these people get to this point to where they labeled themselves as someone with these gifts? You know, like it's mm -hmm. not like they were born and just said, oh, I'm a media. Um, yes. Yeah. You know, it's just like they had to come into it and understand it. So it's really cool to be able to share that whole journey and uh, I guess allow other people to see that and get them to open up themselves more or realize, oh, I, I can tap into this too. That's cool, you know? Yeah, I think that's amazing that you're able to be, you know, authentically yourself and that, of course, your fans feel that and that's why they resonate with your content because this is something that you, it's your actual gift. You're not just like putting on a show, right? So I think that's yeah. why your, your fans really appreciate your content. And have you ever been scared of Lola? Like, have you ever felt, I mean, you wake up in the night and you see her there. <laughs> have you ever been afraid? <laughs> There was like when I first got her, I was pretty nervous because I was still understanding that part of myself and I wanted to get something haunted so I can have more experiences and understand oh, wow. more. Yeah. So when I first got her, I was kind of I was pretty nervous to like sleep and everything like that. Um, but she she's very kind. She doesn't like surprising me and stuff. I'll see her every once in a while, like very briefly, but it's just like, oh, there she is, you know, but she doesn't mean to like surprise me like that because she knows I don't like that. <laughs> oh, and as a psychic medium, what are some things that you are able to predict? I did see in an article that you were able to predict your own death. Is that true? That's yes. pretty scary. I don't know if you want to talk about that, but yeah well i've seen i've seen deaths and unfortunately you know that's another part of my family's gifts is my, some of my cousins have this part but that's why they weren't open about it they have predicted people dying wow. in our family and they don't like that part so that's something that i have had i would never ever tell someone how they're going to die i think that's just not necessary um, but I will see things and I had a really crazy experience where I saw my death, but it's not, it's not for a long time. I think it just kind of eased my anxiety of dying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, well, so things like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, since you're able to predict it, are you able to change the future since you, you know, what's going to happen? Yeah. That's another thing I've always wondered sometimes. There, no matter what I do, I cannot change things. And that's oh. really frustrating. Like I get genuinely frustrated about it. Um, but then there's some things where it's like, okay, this could happen. But if I change one thing, it can definitely impact the rest. Mm -hmm. So it, I think it depends, honestly. I don't think anything's ever written in stone, but things do happen <laughs> when before, you know, I see them. <laughs> yeah, and I want to talk about your song, um, September 10th. I know that was around the time that you had this spiritual awakening and you were really able to like tap into your gifts. So tell us about yeah. the song and what inspired it. Yeah, so it's about um, an event that happened on my birthday. It was like this childhood friend I had and I don't know, I just really saw their true colors that night and they kind of went just we're not nice <laughs> on the night of my birthday, unfortunately. Um, and I don't know, it kind of took me for this turn of like this person I've known half of my life, just how you don't really know people or their intentions. And it really taught me how to set boundaries with myself and how to, um, I don't know, just like become my highest self because I, I felt like I was really being dragged down by this energy for a long time and it just really showed in a visual way. It kind of took me for like an ego death in a way that night too. So it really spiraled me into like this dive of depression, anxiety, things like that. And then I really just was able to find myself again and find out who I am and what I deserve and how I deserve to be treated and all that. So it was a really beautiful song um, written by uh, Kamana Vago. I keep saying their name wrong. I think it's Come and Have a Go. And then uh, Jesse Page as well. Yeah, I think sometimes we have to go through some negative circumstances um, and situations to really change, right? Or really to learn about ourselves. It, it doesn't happen when things are all great. It usually only happens when we lose friends or put in this negative situation where we can really learn and grow from it. So 
I, I can understand what you said about that. So I'm glad that it, you, you know, it, that experience turned out into something positive. So, so I like that. <laughs> and I know that you talked a little bit about acting as well as talking about some of your acting experience. Yeah. Yeah. So um, with the SAG strike, I haven't been doing much, but I'm getting more into acting, you know, when the strike's over and everything like that. So I'm just prepping right now doing like headshots and stuff like that. But I just really can't wait till everything's coming together. I have a good feeling. I really do with the strike going on and everything. Yeah, hopefully it's over soon. And I want to ask you as well, for our viewers that aren't familiar with your content, talk to us a little bit about the content you post. Yeah, so um, on my YouTube channel, I visit some of the most haunted places in the world. I also vlog my life and just experiences I've, I have and uh, spiritual stuff. I don't, I don't know. I just kind of want to share my life very authentically with my audience. And then on TikTok, I'll do like ghost encounters I've had and make them really just over the top comedic <laughs> dramatic um i'm starting to do some skits on there that i'm writing right now which i think is just kind of funny just like a i don't know adding some comedy into like the paranormal world that's so scary for a lot of people just showing them like hey this is kind of silly like that people do this or that i've had experiences like this so let's make light out of it yeah, I actually like that about your content is that you make you make it comedic as well. So it's not so dark and scary. Yeah. You make it comedic. So I think a lot of people, you know, can watch it and have a laugh at it um, instead of taking it so seriously. So I like that, that you make it fun, you know, <laughs> which you should. I mean, it, it's a it, it's social media. Right. And for anyone that wants to build a social media channel, maybe is struggling to do so. What are some steps that they can do to kind of build their following? Yeah, it's all about staying consistent, finding your niche, um, and I don't know, just like keep going. Just don't give up. Make sure your content's top quality. Make sure you're very happy with everything that you post and you think, think it through and just allow yourself to be creative. Just don't think that anything's too much or too little. You know what I mean? Like don't yeah. criticize yourself so much. Just trust yourself and make your authentic content the best the best way you can yeah absolutely i find that the content that i consume is always people that are authentic and that you you resonate with and they're being themselves right you could tell when someone's being themselves and i i like that kind of content and i think that's why your channel has blown up and you know I created my platform to inspire, to uplift, and really to be a beacon of light for anyone watching that's going through a hard time, to showcase that anything is possible. So for someone that maybe doesn't feel like they're fitting in, maybe is not seeing their dreams happen, they're putting in the work, or they're just feeling low, what would you say to inspire and uplift them? Yeah, just, um, I don't know. So with my experience, I was like super shy in high school, and I was never that person that was in the you know, I was never like at the center of attention or anything like that. Um, but I just always knew what I wanted to do. And I truly believe in manifestation and manifesting what you can be and just raising your vibrations in whatever way you can. I definitely meditate on things and I'll just like really think about things like who I want to be, what I want to be doing at this point of time in five years, like I really visualize it. And as you do that, your mind is so powerful. Just you need to really believe in yourself and believe that you can get there and that you are special because every single person is special in their own unique way. So always remember that and never get down on yourself because people are always going to try to pull you down. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do this. But it's like, what, what do you think these actors and these huge stars went through? They probably went through so many people trying to tear them down, telling them they can't do something. So yeah. you just have to ignore those people and just like keep on your own journey. Yeah, absolutely. I interviewed successful people for a living. Just a couple of weeks ago, I interviewed Sylvester Stallone. And every single person, whether it was like James Franco or Rachel McAdams or or anybody, they all went through so many obstacles before they got to where they are. And they believed in themselves. And I like that you talked about manifestation because I'm very big on manifesting the law of attraction. And I, I research this a lot. And 
you know, as and it all boils down to one thing is your belief in yourself and believing you can do it and that you're worthy. So I like that you talked about that because we are such powerful beings and people underestimate their power, but we're all powerful and we all have the same gift to to really believe in ourselves and make our dreams happen. So I like that you said that. <laughs> yeah, we're all creators and we all create our own realities. It's yes. magical. <laughs> yeah, we're all alchemists. And and Kelsey, what else is um, what else are you working on? What are your current projects? Um, I'm making a tarot card deck. I've I took a little break because I did like every single card. It's been a lot, you know, to do that on top of everything else. I do have a lot of YouTube videos coming out and I do have a couple projects that I'm working on that I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about them yet, but um, after the strike's over, then I'll be able to share everything and I'm just really excited for everything that's coming this year. Amazing. Kelsey, thank you so much for being on the show today. I wish you all the success and we hope to have you back on the show soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.